Hello, it's a beautiful sunny day, uh, and I'm gonna do a little bit of napping again. But today I've got something a little different planned. I found this rock in Princeton, and it's a great big chunk of who knows. Uh, it looks almost like a siltstone. There's plant material in it, uh, but what I know is it's nappable. It's some sort of churdy, silicified stuff. Uh, maybe I'll take a closer look and we can try and figure out what it is while we're working it. But in here you can see there's kind of burnt wood. Um, but, oh, the sun's coming out more. So here's a rock. This is the wood I was talking about. You can see you can actually still pick it out. Um, this uh, I take taken a couple flakes off of it, but I found it in Princeton, and this is what the outside looked like. There's nice big dishes, smooth looking material, and when you're out exploring, looking for rock like this, you want to keep your eyes open for these big big dishes. They almost look like shells and people have kind of an innate primal recognition of this material. These shapes. They're very appealing and you can pick them out out of 10,000 rocks you can pick something out like this. Um, not everybody can and that's why there is often material that's left. But, uh, yeah, so, I've never seen this material, nobody, as far as I know, no Princeton flint nappers exist that would have used it, so this will be a bit of a treat, we'll get to see the first one of this ever napped, I never made anything out of it yet, so, let's, uh, I want to try and take a flake off here, maybe a nice big spall, and then uh, just work that down, rather than going and making a big mess of this nice rock. So, as you can see, it's not super shiny, but it does nap fairly well, if I remember correctly. So the light's probably going to be changing as the day progresses, and we'll need to move in a bit. But I want to quickly try and take a couple flakes off. I don't have a great big bobber with me right now. I could try and dig it out, I might have to, but... Let's see what we can find. Let's just take a nice little test flake off the end here. a little piece. Yeah, it does nap well. I remember now. Got some crazing in it. And the organics kind of stop the flakes, but there's one thing that we can work with here. I wouldn't mind finding something a bit bigger. There we go. This looks like it might work a bit better. It's a little piece of low quality nephrite, really pretty rock, and probably should be able to get into this bigger one. So this will be a little, a little using using hammer stones to get into a rock deal. So that platform crushed. There we go, look at that. That's what I remember. And this is why I picked it up and brought it home. Because I just went with one big rock at the river 
and I hit it once and it shot a flake all the way across to the other side right here this big flat surface so this will be a little spalling lesson now as much as you want to hit it again I suggest maybe just tapping it with a bopper after you've done it not on the edge either sometimes it sticks together a bit and you don't want to wreck the wreck the rock inside it okay I am going to tap the edge a little bit what's going on it kind of terminated funny at the end here but <laughs> well, I guess we have to... There we go. Here it's coming. Good. So, there's one. And then two. So there was a bit of freeze crack in there. And that's why it was didn't release really nicely, but here's there's the nice spall. Look at that. Beautiful. I think this is what we'll work today. Make a nice big blade. Beautiful. It looks almost like on and shirt. It's pretty uh doesn't stink though. I thought it might. Cool. Well, let's put this away and we can start work on one of our nice big spalls. So the other day somebody contacted me about sound, left a comment on one of the older videos about sound, uh, and I think she's doing a, a master's on acoustics in rock while you're uh, flint napping and whether like the, the guiding, if that guides you and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's about. I'll probably talk to her a bit more. She's across the world, but um, uh, you can definitely hear when there's a good flake and when there's a bad flake. Uh, it's a it's one of the most satisfying parts about flint mapping is when you get good and you start taking those nice flakes and they just crack. It goes right where you want it. But, um, so hopefully we get a nice, nice sound for you right now. Okay, so that kind of went flat because it, rent, it, it uh, rolled out here. So this is a, what you call a hinge fracture. And I didn't think in my reply I said, usually I can hear when a hinge fracture comes. And that, that's kind of what it always sounds like. It's not a nice sharp crack. It kind of dies out too quickly. And you don't get a satisfying flake out of it. Um, now this is tough material. 
So I'll need to have really stout platforms. But you could hear the difference with all of those flakes, right, that I just took off. They were nice, nice, sharp, crack, crack, crack. And then the one before was just a thuk almost. Like it just didn't have the same ring to it. Um, so. There we go. So that one had a kind of a kind of a ring to it. But took off all of that that triangle bit there. Um, With an antler billet or a hammer stone, it's just, it's even more noticeable. Um, the copper, I find, kind of dulls the sound a bit. Um, I might do a video with some, with some antler or hammer stones in a bit. So, yeah, that's, right now I'm just trying to take a flake off of this ridge here. This is really tough material. This is probably about twice as tough as a uh, porcelain. Oof, hit my leg too hard. Or Johnstone, I mean. It's, and Johnstone's known for wrecking boppers, bruising your leg up. So I think I'm gonna go for some smaller flakes. Otherwise, I'll have to quit this early. It'd be cool if we got a Clovis out of this. But maybe we'll just make some sort of really tough axe or something. I think when I get some more views per uh, video and have a few more nice series up, I'm gonna start doing a uh, thing where if you leave a comment and like, uh, I'll I'll give you the point that I make in the show. So just to kind of help with engagement and give something back. So a lot of these will make really nice little bird points so maybe we can continue the series tough rock nap time or something and uh, make some little nice points. mailman came through. Dropped off a letter. So, gonna try and take a nice big flake. This rock is really unforgiving, so normally I wouldn't grind this much, but... See, I'm gonna have to hit this hard. Right. Just like that. There we go. There. That's a nice one. Thinned down the bi face quite a bit too, actually. With such tough rock, it might be nice to just make some sort of a traditional looking hoe or something. It 
if we can get it thin enough. It'd be nice to do some series on going out and finding rock that's a bit more unconventional. Possibly heat treating. Do a little guide on that. Oof. That didn't sound so good. The trouble when you have to hit the rock so hard is you have to swing the bullet really fast. So you can end up getting impatient, hitting too many times. when you should really just concentrate if you mess up oh. and your platform breaks just really concentrate on isolating out a new platform making it really tough and just start again right rather than forcing it and wrecking the piece. So, I'm just getting rid, right there, I'm just getting rid of some stuff that looks like it might overhang. And if I hit that, the flake definitely won't run. So, I always align my bopper with where I want the flake to go. You don't really need to, but I like to. Uh, I check and see when I hit it if I'm gonna have contact where I want it to be and it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be there so I slate up a little bit and here we go oh it does smell a little bit like petrol like on Daga. Give her a go. Oh, not quite. Oh well. This might be a bit of a stout edge on this. I've been trying to preserve this side because it's smoother, the flakes run better on it. And generally speaking, you want to save this material until last because you can end up chipping all of this away and being left to trying to finish off a point with all this kind of organic material and sand in it. 